You're listening to the 71st edition of the Bitochen Podcast. And we continue with quotes from Chazal, from our sages. Vishmul bar Nachman Posach. It's in Bresh Rab, it's in Medrash, it says like this. Vishmul bar Nachman opened up, I actually just heard an explanation. We find it often in the Medrash that they opened up. And Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Per explained that it means that they were inspired by something. Our sages, they were inspired by something. They started a new gisha, a new approach to life as a result of something that they understood, a depth of, of something in a pasuk, etc. So here is the new gisha that Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachman, the new approach to life that Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachman had. He said like this. Pasuk says in Tehillim, Shila Mali Sasoyna Right, you can see the mountains behind me, the hills of Judah here near Beit Shemesh. Pasuk says, a song of ascents, King David said, I will raise up my eyes to the mountains. We can read the Pasuk, which means, I will look up to the mountains. We can also read it that it means, I will look up to the Horim, to my parents. This Ezram. To think about, says the explanation here, how will my help come, right? How will I get my help? How will I get heavenly assistance? The word heharim can mean a a teaching, someone who teaches me. And it can also mean somebody who gives birth to me. Heroyon means giving birth, right? Our hairim, our parents, and our teachers are referred to as a moira, as a teacher, and a hoira, a hoira is a parent. For this reason, the malfonai, to those who teach me, ma'abdani, those who have created me, who brought me into the world. Okay, so we can look back to our teachers, we can look back to our parents, and we can see lessons from the way that they behaved as to how we should behave if we want to receive divine assistance. So let's see. Where is my help going to come from? So the word Ezri, the word Ezri, which means my help, we can look at Eliezer. Eliezer was the servant of Avram Avinu, of Abraham. And he went looking for a wife, for Avram's son Yitzchak, for Isaac, our great, great, great grandfather. Eliezer, his name is my God will help me. Right, so we're looking for help. We're trying to think about how do we get help? Let's look at what happened in the life of Yitzchak Avinu, of Isaac of Avraham, of Abraham. Now Eliezer searched for help. What did he do? Shalach Lavias Rivka. He went to search for a wife. For Yitzchak, he found Rebekah. Maxiv Bey, what does the Pesach say? Vayikach ha'evet asar gemol v'goymer. Okay, so the Medrash tells us that he brought all of these many animals, all of this wealth and riches, and he gave her the nizamim, he gave her the, the nose rings and the bracelets, etc., in order to impress upon her the, the incredible wealth of Avram Avin, right? But when it comes to Yaakov Avin, when it comes to Jacob, he comes, he arrives there empty handed. Says the Medrash, Yaakov Avin, Jacob, he comes to the same place, he comes to Laban's house, which is where Eliezer had come to, but he comes empty handed, he has nothing to show. He has nothing to impress with. He has nothing to, to prove that he has, that he comes from an aristocratic uh, family. I don't have not one rose, nose ring, not one bracelet. I have nothing to show. I don't, I don't think it was an idea of impressing. I don't think it was an idea of trying to impress his future father-in-law. But rather it was, it was, you know, as we see in the Hemshech of the story of Yaakov you know, with Jacob, he goes back for the Pachim Kitanim. On his way back into the land of Israel, he returns over the river in order to get Pachim Kitanim, small vessels. And our Chazal, our sages, teach us that the idea is that, why did he go back? Because a tzaddik, a righteous person, understands that every single thing in a person's life is a kli, it's a vessel. He went back for the little vessels. Why? Everything is a vessel with which to serve Hashem. Right? If Hashem gave me a certain thing, so that's something that I need to use. If Hashem gave me a talent, Hashem gave me money, Hashem gave me wealth, whatever it is, Hashem wants me to use those things that He's given me in order to serve Him. 
So Yaakov Avinu is arriving without anything to show. So that's a big kasha, right? He wants to impress spiritually Rachel and Leah, so to speak. He wants to show them, look, I'm a person who has a, who has a great future. I'm the person who's going to be the forebear of the Jewish people. So I have to have something to show. I have to have Kalim. I have to have impressive wealth. Not so much to impress you with my wealth, but, so, but to show that I'm somebody who Hashem values and gives me the wherewithal and the means with which to serve Him. And so this is, this is the question that he had, Yaakov Avinu. Which is similar to what we saw last week. He said to himself, just like Sari Imenu said, He said, Why am I going to lose my faith, lose my hope from my Creator? What do, not, do I not trust Hashem that He will give me the wife that I need, etc.? He explains here, Should I lose my hope? Should I forget? That God is in charge of my life, heaven forbid, chas v'shalem. Less on a moivit sirim in bari. A very similar theme to what Sarah Menu said. You know, she was 90 years old. She said, I'm not going to give up hope. Similar to what the astrologer said, the, the ger, the proselyte, the Jewish proselyte who had previously been an astrologer. What am I? I became a Jew for what reason? To be involved in thinking about the stars and what's going to be, etc. No, I don't give up hope. It might seem hopeless. It might seem that all of the signs are bringing me to a certain moment in time that that's, it's going to be impossible. I'm not going to be able to do what I need to do. I'm not going to be able to start the Jewish people, Yaakov Avinu is saying. How am I going to do it if I don't have the kalim, if I don't have that wealth? It was taken away from him. He arrived penniless, right? Chas v'shalom, I don't give up hope. Listen, I'm going to give up hope. Ela ezrimim Hashem. What did he say? He said, my hope, my help is from Hashem. My help is from Hashem. I have nothing. Sometimes, Kodesh Baruch Hu takes away everything from a person. You know, I, I can't help thinking about, we just went through Tisha B'Av, and, and uh, you know, you read stories on Tisha B'Av of the Holocaust, you read about people who lost everything in the war. They started over. They started from the beginning. They started from the very beginning. They had nothing. But at that moment, when a person feels hopeless, that's what this message is. That's what the message of Yaakov Avinu is. That's what the message of Tisha B'av is. The moment that everything seems hopeless. It's how Rabbi Akiva, his message, Shualim Hilchubai, the foxes are walking in the Kodesh HaKadosh, in the Holy of Holies. He, he doesn't give up hope. He sees, the, he sees the bright beginning. In the darkness and destruction, he, seems, he sees the, the beginning. Ezri Meim Hashem. So that's the lessons. Shir Lamalis. You want to know how to ascend. It's the song of ascents. You, know, you want to know how to rise up. I turn to the mountains. I want to know how to go up. I turn to the mountains. Look at these mountains. Look at the beautiful mountains. I turn to my parents. To those who teach me. What does Yaakov Avinu teach me? He teaches me. As we may Hashem. That in a moment where it seems like I have no hope. I turn to Hashem. I know that. There's always hope. It's a Kodesh Baruch Hu is always with me. God is always with me. So that's the idea of Shmuel Bar Nachman. It says in the Medrash, so that was the turning point. He, Posach, he started a new, a new day, a new life with this incredible realization. I could have nothing today. I could wake up in the morning, have nothing. Be homeless on the street. But Hashem, as you name Hashem, Hashem is with me. I don't have anything to worry about. Okay, that's concept number one here. Let's see the next concept. Okay. I'm Rabbi Yehuda ben Pazi. Rabbi Yehuda ben Pazi says like this. This is also a Medrash in Precious Rabba. Perak Chav, Chav Gimel. I believe it's Parsha Chav Gimel, section Dal. It says like this. Ma ro Yisrael amashira be'oz. Talks about the Jewish people. We come through the sea, splits for us. We come through the sea and we az yashir Moshe. Then, Moshe Rabbeinu of Israel, the children of Israel, then they sing the amazing song of the Shir Hayom, the song of salvation, the song of redemption, the song of Geula. 
Why do they sing the word us? What's the idea of the word us? Us means then. They said like this. Originally, the this yam, this sea, this water, this body of water was originally dry land. Okay, originally it was dry land. But the nation, the generation of Anosh, which is Enoch, they came and they profaned God's name. They angered Hashem, they angered God. And they used Vechis of when the when the verse speaks about that which they did wrong, how they forgot about God, let's say. So it uses the word Uz. Then, Shanem, the Pasuk says, it's in Bereshis, Berk Dalad, Pasuk Chavav, Uz Hucha Lekrei Hashem. Then it became profaned to call out the name of God. Okay, so there was a, there was a Chil Hashem, a desecration of God's name, that's what I'm looking for. There was a desecration of God's name that came about in the time of Enosh when instead of calling out to God, they started out to call out to idolatry, to the stars, to the, instead of calling directly to Hashem, to God Himself, they took, they took idols. You know, why are we going to the king? God has messengers. Let's go to the messengers. God doesn't want to bother with us. That's how they, that's how they thought. So it became profaned. It was desecrated. God's name is desecrated. Why? He wants us to call to Him directly. He's not interested in us going to intermediaries. He's not interested in us having faith in a person, that the person is going to help me, he's going to bless me, he's going to save me. No. God wants us to come straight to Him, to the infinite God, incorporeal, not a physical being. He wants us to come straight to Him. It's a desecration of His name when we don't go straight to Him. What happened? The earth, which was dry, right? It was overrun by the water in the times of Noah as a result of their unending involvement in idolatry, not turning to Hashem, not looking for a relationship with God. As a result of that, Hashem brought the Mehamabu, the waters of the flood. And they were poured upon the, air, the, the land. So, so you have the word us, the word which means then, then, because of that great sin of turning away from Hashem, the desecration of Hashem's name, then it became profaned. Then Hashem brought a marble upon the dry land, brought about water, and the water swept away the sin. What did the Jewish people see? They saw that this was being reversed. They saw an incredible sign in front of them. You see, there had never been, as far as I know, such a miracle ever that there was water somewhere and the water was turned to dry land. This was a reversal of what Hashem had done to punish the world with water, with the mabul, with the flood of Noah. And it was made for us, on our behalf, a miracle. The sea became, became dry land. Basak says, the people of Israel, they walked in the middle of the sea on dry land. So when we see that this terrible thing is reversed, what was the terrible thing, the desecration of Hashem's name? This idea that we could turn to somebody else instead of God, heaven forbid. This idea that there are intermediaries and why would we bother Hashem? Hashem is a distant king. That brought about a terrible destruction, which was represented by water, which deluged. I don't know if that's, it could be used as a verb, but it created a deluge in the world, upon the earth, upon the dry land. We see the opposite of that. Now we're going to use that same word, us, which means then. Then, now that we see that Hashem is reversing it, the Kalsenu us, we're going to praise Hashem with the word us. We're going to say, thank you, God. You changed, you transformed that which seemed like a place where we can't live. It seems like utter destruction. The place of water, 
the sea. Human beings can't survive there for a moment. You transform that into a yabasha, a dry place, a place where we can traverse, where we can walk through. Says the Medrash to finish off, Whenever you have the word Oz, whenever you have this word Oz, which means then, it's a language of faith, of confidence in God. Shenemar Oz Telech Levetach Darkecha, Pasuk says in Mishle in Proverbs. And then, and then you will go with confidence on your way. And then. So the Jewish people saw an amazing thing. Nature is reversed. The sins are reversed. We went through all these difficulties and challenges for 210 years, 400 years, 430 years, whatever the number is. So many years, hundreds of years, we were enslaved in Egypt. And now Hashem reverses, perhaps as a result of our suffering, Hashem reverses the very punishment He brought upon the world. And now we praise Him with the word Oz. Then, Oz Yeshir Ma'ashem Yisrael, we are going to praise Him and sing to Him and thank Him. And we are going to have absolute confidence. That's what this teaching is. It's an amazing teaching. We look around and we see Hashem is with us. We look around and we see Hashem. Hashem ba'amoy. Hashem wants us. He, he shows that He desires our sacrifice. That the things that we've done to serve Him have value to Him. Hashem shows us and makes a miracle for us and, and does it in a way which shows a reversal of the punishment, a reversal of the way things seem to be headed, of the way, I'm thinking about the story of Haman and the story of, of Purim and Esther and Mordechai, where, where Mordechai, he sees things are turning around. It's a sign, it's a moment of, it's a moment of reflection Hasn't yet turned around completely yet. Haman hasn't fallen yet. He hasn't been hanged. But Mordechai is being led through the streets. So shall be done to the one who the king desires. I, I can't help but think about the Jewish people here in Eretz Yisrael. You've heard this from me. I'm going to continue to talk about it. The amazing fact that here we are, almost 7 million strong in the land of Israel. What a reversal. On Tishua, like we said, we read about the Holocaust, we read about the terrible losses so many years ago, not so many years ago, 75 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. But we see Hashem has reversed things. Hashem is leading us forward. Hashem has transformed the Yam into Yabasha. He has transformed a country which couldn't, couldn't produce anything. Look at the, all the green behind me. Look at this beautiful country. He's transformed it, the Psukim say, that the Ramban says, one of the greatest signs to know that Mashiach is so close, you're on the, on the precipice of Mashiach. You're on the, you're on the doorstep of Mashiach. You're in the Ikvis of the Mashiach. In the final moments before Mashiach is when the land starts to grow, when we return and we start to cultivate the land. It's a reversal. It's a transformation. We were sent out of the land and the land became desolate. And we come back to the land, and the land, instead of being overrun and destroyed, now it's cleared. And now it's starting to give forth its fruits. And so, us, Yashir, us, we can have bitachon, we can have courage. And know, just as Mordechai could have courage as things turned around, we can know and have faith that things have turned around. We are headed in the, in the right direction. Kali, so the Jewish people is headed in the right direction. We're coming back. We're returning. We're returning to our faith, to our confidence in God, to our bitachon. It's not going to be wealth. It's not going to be all of the riches that worked for Eliezer. They didn't, they're not going to work for me, Yaakov says. Yaakov realizes. Yaakov knows. We turn to our forefathers and we say, Yesayin al harim. Our, our help comes from Hashem. Our help comes from God. And He's showing us the signs. That he's going to help us. Then we can have full confidence and we can continue on our way in that confidence. Thank you so much for listening. See you again next time.